my presentation will be a Cognitronics automatic number announcer. It is connected to, in this case, a Western Electric ANI-D, which stands for Automatic Number Identifier Model D. I have a code off of my selector that accesses this trunk. And when this trunk is seized, the Cognitronics then goes off hook and requests the phone number that the phone is, uh, the call is originating from. So it will receive a information digit, then the ANI, which would be in this case, the office code plus the station digit, a start feature. There's also an information digit that is uh, in this as well. The Cognitronics does not care about the information digit and it does not care about the start because it'll work on any of them. I'll demonstrate this by dialing the code real quick. I have the camera pointed to the ANI outpulser. This is the piece of equipment that sends the phone number of the calling line to the trunk. The way this is accomplished is um, when you dial from a telephone in a step office to a trunk, you have three wires, a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. You could also have a fourth lead, but in my case, I'm not using it. What they do is they put a 130 volt positive pulse on the sleeve lead that goes into the trunk and then through the wiring and lights a neon lamp on the identifier board, which then that uh, operates relays to put in the office code, which is pre-wired and then sends out the thousands, hundreds, tens of units. This happens very quickly. So I'll make two repetitive calls and you will see the outpulser relays operating. So I had the speaker hooked up on the second uh, time that I made a call. The system operates very quickly. My particular ANID has two out pulses on it. And there's other relay plates that uh, are preference circuits and so forth. So during an idle uh, condition, such as my office is idle 99% of the time, that particular trunk will always reach the same outpulser. Now I could busy this outpulser out and make it reach the other one, but it would sound identical and you wouldn't see or notice any difference. I'll show some of the network cards and a little bit of the wiring in a moment. But these were uh, very common in small step offices. 
Western Electric made an ANI A, a B, C, D, and then the last one was an electronic identifier as an E. I've never seen one, but I do have read that they existed. The neon network cards are in these two shelves, and I have enough of 1,000 phone numbers. My office is equipped with 800. Uh, I also have the 9,000 group wired in here for my pay phones, only uh, 20 lines out of the 9,000 group. This is a network card that has 20 of the sleeve leads wired to it. And then this is what's connected to the relays to operate the uh, thousands, hundreds, tens, and units relay. Back of the network cage with all of the sleeve cables wired to it. This is the back of one of the outpulsers with the relays and the silver components or networks for um, contact protection. These silver cans are the oscillators for the A&I. This particular strip of oscillators is located in my number three crossbar, but it's the same exact strip. The ones in the A and I are mounted at the very top of the bay and they're nine foot off the floor. This is the back of the oscillator. It's got uh, capacitors, diodes, and so forth. And there's pots to adjust the frequency. The main frame where all of the lines and connector terminals appear. The sleeve leads that are wired to the network cards are wired to the bottom of the cable that goes to the connector. This is installer wiring and it's only done one time because the connector numbers do not change, the sleeve leads would not change. However, through a jumper arrangement on the top of the block, I can assign any telephone line equipment to any phone number. Otherwise, if I assigned the sleeve leads to the lines, then I would have to have a one-to-one -one cross connect, and that's not how it was done in the central office. Most of the bays that you see in the picture are the A and I. I have approximately 40 A and I trunks. Only around 10 or 12 are wired, at least to the channel bank. Close up of the outpulser. This is outpulser zero. The process that I showed you of the Cognitronics reading back the number of the line that the call is originating from, if I was to dial one plus um, into my asterisk tandem, which is set up to emulate a class four switch, then there would be rotary dial pulses that would be pulsed into the trunk connected to asterisk. And at the end of 10 digits, then the asterisk uh, driver would then go off hook and request the number that the call is originating from. I'll make one call that is a dial pulse call and the A&I. You will not hear the MFs, but it'll be identical uh, set of digits as the uh, Cognitronics. I just made a long distance call into my exchange. So the call went from the trunk into asterisk and then back uh, into my office. There is a 
D4 channel bank. Um, that's the interface between the trunk and the asterisk, uh, which uh, I won't show that in this particular video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.